Some 70 years ago, a very great physicist, Erwin Schrodinger, wrote uh, a little book entitled What is Life? And it is remarkable that that simple question, the answer to that simple question, is still eluding us some uh, 70 years later, despite the enormous developments that there have been in molecular bi biology in the time since he wrote that book. Uh, the problem is that we're still lacking a theory of life. And because we're lacking that theory of life, central issues about life are, uh, are ones that we can't still yet deal with. We don't know how life uh, emerged. We don't know how one would go about making life. Uh, the characteristics of living things are remarkable. Uh, my granddaughter, when she was uh, just three, understood very well the distinction between a toy dog and a real dog. She loved toy dogs, but she was scared of real dogs because she knew they had a mind of their own and they were a little bit unpredictable. We still don't understand essential elements of living things such as that purposeful character. Well, but there's good news. In recent years, there's been a new area of chemistry that's emerged called systems chemistry that deals specifically uh, with replicating molecules. That's molecules that can make copies of themselves that are remarkable characteristics. So they make these replicating molecules and networks that these molecules can uh, generate. And we're finding that that area of chemistry, that new area, is filling the void between so-called regular chemistry, the chemistry that we've known for centuries, and biology, which is in a sense a very complex kind of replicative chemistry. So what, are, what has uh, this systems theory taught us? What is it beginning to tell us? That Darwinian theory is really uh, a limited theory uh, in that it only focuses on the evolution of biological systems, but there is an underlying more general theory of evolution that encompasses uh, living things and actually stretches out through to the inanimate world, the world of non-living things. So we have here a theory of evolution that incorporates both living and non-living, and that's the link that can connect uh, uh, inanimate matter with life and through that theory we can now begin to piece together the process by which life emerged from non-life to understand the principles by which that transformation would have occurred and maybe even give us some hints as to how one might or the difficulties at least that one will have to overcome in order to be able to make life.